Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to continue on with our ECU Tune series. I'm going to cover the BK1 Hyundai Genesis Coupe 3.8. So that is 2010 through 2012 Genesis Coupe 3.8 ECU Tune. Before we get started, as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Um, today, I'm going to dive right in and get to the bottom and the details of what the tune includes. And also finish off the video with some dyno sheets to give you an idea of what you can expect from the tune. Alright, so we're starting off on our website, www.shopbtr.com. If you haven't put this in your favorites yet, go ahead and do so because you will be visiting this website a lot um, as we supply all sorts of parts from interior, exterior, ECU tunes, turbo kits, and everything under the sun pretty much for the um, Genesis Coupe and other platforms as well. Okay, so let's uh, get to where we need to go today. So first thing I'm going to do is click Genesis Coupe parts, 3.8, ECU tune. So we're going to have three different ECU tunes here. Um, I'm actually going to post a link to another video that explains the difference between the three tunes. Today I'm going to focus on the can tune portion. So we're just going to go here. All right. Um, I'm going to start off by first explaining the name of the actual tune. So Alpha Speed Can Tune ECU Service. Okay. So Alpha Speed is the tuner. Alpha Speed is who does all the tunes for our KDM platform, and they are the leading tuner when it comes to the Genesis Coupe platform um, overall. Okay, so this is an ECU tune service, meaning you have to ship in your ECU, and we tune the ECU for you and ship it back right to you. Okay, um, the whole process takes about two to three business days. So once you ship the ECU to us, we receive it. It'll take us two to three business days on average before we ship it back out to you. Your car will be down during that time, so make sure you plan accordingly when you're sending in your ECU. Okay, uh, let me go through the, the list here. The first thing you want to do is select the right type of engine uh, and year. So today we're going to focus on the BK1, so we're looking at between 2010 and 2012. Transmission-wise, manual or automatic, make sure you choose the correct one. We have some clients that come in and say, hey, I have a manual, but it turns out they have an automatic. Just because you have a manual mode and have the ability to shift uh, with your pedal shifters doesn't make your automatic car a manual. Okay, so your car. So make sure you select the right transmission, because if you select the wrong transmission, this can definitely screw up the tuning process. So if your car came with a manual transmission, that's what you want to choose. And if your car came with an automatic transmission, that's what you want to choose. Octane level wise, we're going to have 91 and 93 octane tunes available. We do not do tunes for 87 or 89 octane because the reason being with such low octane fuel, there's no room for us to advance timing, change cam profiles, anything like that uh, when it comes to tuning. Okay, If we start leaning things out and advancing timing on a lower octane, it can create detonation and knock which can damage your engine. So you will need to run at a minimum 91 octane fuel. Now, there are a couple of things that you need to think about when you're choosing the octane level. One, you need to think about what's available in your area. Certain states only have 91, certain states have 93, okay? Now, let's say your, your location, wherever you're located at, is 93 is very easily accessible. You might wanna go for the 93. If you travel, across state lines a lot and you're not sure what level of octane those states may have you might actually want to opt yourself for a 91 octane tune even though there are 93 octane available around your area the reason being you can always pump higher octane than what the tune is requesting okay so if you're doing a 91 octane ecu tune you could run 93 octane fuel in your tank but you can't do it the other way around. So you can't have a 93 octane tune and run 91 octane in your tank because that will cause detonation. OK, 
Okay, so if you travel a lot um, across state lines, um, you definitely want to think about maybe putting uh, a 91 octane tune on the car instead of a 93 octane. That way you're covered throughout your travels. You don't really have to really have to worry about what level of fuel you're inputting. All you have to do is put a 91 or 93. Okay. Um, obviously, if you're not traveling a lot and you have 93 octane available in your area, 93 is going to give you the best result because of its higher octane rating. Now let's move on to the next option, pop and bang slash burble option. Um, pop and bang has become very popular lately. Um, it's basically the exhaust pop and banging and burbling on during decel. So this only happens during de deceleration, meaning you need to be coming down from a higher RPM and letting the engine kind of break itself down when it's coming down the RPMs, and that's when you're gonna hear the pops and bangs coming out of your exhaust. If you have a stock exhaust system, you're really not gonna hear the pops and bangs. You're going to have uh, an aftermarket exhaust system to hear all the pops and bangs that's happening. I do have a separate video that covers how pops and bangs work, so I'll link that above as well if you wanna know how those work. Um, this is a no-cost option to you, so it's up to you if you want it or not. The pops and bangs happen uh, on diesel above 3,000 RPMs. Um, while the car is deselling, let's say from 6,000 down to 3,000, if you want it to be a little bit more aggressive than what's happening naturally, you can actually put your foot on the throttle very, very lightly and make the pops even more aggressive than what the na natural popping comes out to be. Okay, so that's a, that's totally an option you can choose. Launch control wise, we have options from 3,500 RPM, 4,000 RPMs, and 4,500 RPMs. RPMs. Launch control is it's desirable in the manual transmission because you can actually use it to launch your car. So um, I would recommend around 3,500 RPMs would be probably the best RPM to launch a 3.8 at. But the higher the RPM, the more aggressive it's going to sound as well. So it's up to you um, which RPM you choose to go. And also because the 3.8 isn't turbocharged or supercharged or anything like that, Technically, you don't need launch control to launch. All you have to do is kind of get your foot to wherever RPM you want to launch the car at and drop the clutch. Okay, but I mean, this does make really cool backfiring noises while um, when you're actually activating launch control. Um, on the automatics, this setting is also available. However, you cannot actually use it to launch. Okay, so it only works in park and neutral. And these cars do not allow you to neutral drop, which is a good thing because neutral drops can actually damage your transmission quite a lot. So you're, you'll only be there to make noise with it on an automatic transmission, so keep that in mind. This next one is very important to get correct. Uh, we need to know if your car is a Key Start US model, Key Start Canada model, Key Start Puerto Rico model, or if it's a push button start. Okay, so these cars come with what they call an immobilizer. Only thing that doesn't come with an immobilizer is the US model key start. Everything else in this list has an immobilizer system built in, meaning your ECU, your body control module, and your key all have a specific set of codes that needs to match for your car to turn on and drive. So we need to know exactly what kind of car you have, what kind of ignition system you have, that way we can program it accordingly. So make sure you get this part correct. Double and triple check this when you actually check out, okay? Lastly, pre-tuned ECU option. So pre-tuned ECU option is for people who do not want to send their ECUs in, okay? This is where we actually source out an ECU for you. We program it to work with your car and we send it out to you. Um, there is an extra charge for this, obviously, because we do have to purchase a new ECU. And there is a lot more programming involved in order to make a pre-tuned ECU versus just tuning over your OEM ECU that you send in, okay? This particular option will take a lot longer than sending in your ECU because we do have to um, source out the proper ECU for your car. We can't just get a generic 3.8 ECU and reprogram everything. We do have to find a specific ECU that fits with your car. So this process can take a week to to about three weeks, depending on um, what the process of sourcing the ECU is like at that point of time, okay? So make sure you keep that in mind. I hope that answers all your questions. If you have any more questions, you know, definitely, you can read through the descriptions here, and you can also comment below, and I'll answer those for you. Um, 
let's get to the dyno sheet so I can show you what kind of results you can expect from the ECU tunes. So this first one I want to show you is from a DK1 3.8 automatic with full bolt-ons. Okay, it came in with full bolt-ons, so it actually put down pretty good power from uh, with the factory tune. So you actually end up putting down 274 wheel horsepower, 254 foot-pounds of torque, and after the tune, we ended up seeing 285 wheel horsepower and 267 foot-pounds of torque. So it almost did, what, 11 more horsepower at the wheels and 13 more torque at the wheels as well. Now, keep in mind, those are peak numbers. So I actually wanted to point out to you right here in the mid-range, we ended up seeing were around, what, 24 wheel torque gain, right around 4,200 RPMs. Um, and then horsepower-wise, I mean, if you look at the whole graph, this area between the blue and the red the whole RPM range has gained significant amount of power. So there's a huge difference when you're driving the car because it's NA, you're not gonna be getting like 50, 60 horsepower, but there are certain parts of the graph under the graph where you're getting 24 wheel horsepower. Keep in mind, this is wheel horsepower, meaning it's about 15 to 20% lower than what the engine is currently making. Um, being that it's an automatic, most likely it's a, it's closer to the 20% range of loss of power. So that's a huge gain uh, when it comes to power. Next graph I'm going to show you is from a manual transmission, except this car was completely stock. Okay, So this is a completely stock car. And the stock um, system is very easy to recognize because of all these dips that it has. Okay, You see a dip right here, and you also see a dip down back here towards the red line. The red is... The baseline, so it baselined at 269 wheel horsepower and 256 foot-pounds of torque. So it was actually putting down less uh, than the the automatic version I showed you. But however, keep in mind, this one was full bolt-ons. This one was completely stock. Okay, So completely stock, it put down 269, 256. And on the same exact vehicle, that's completely stock vehicle, all we did was tune on it with 93 octane. It ended up getting 278 wheel horsepower and 262 foot pounds of torque. Now, obviously, if this car had more bolt ons like the automatic graph that we saw earlier, this car will have even more power to the ground. But I wanted to see if I can get a stock um, form of uh, a, a car for you. That way, I can sh really show you what you can expect from this, uh, both in bolt on and, and stock form. So, we're looking at nine horse nine wheel horsepower gain and what um, like a six wheel torque gain when it comes to peak power gains um and again that's because the car has stock hardware um, stock intake and stock exhaust is very restrictive and there's only so much you can squeeze out of the hardware um limitations that we have from that however same thing as we saw on the um the automatic graph the power under the curve throughout the whole curve has increased okay and even here, in between where the dips are, the dips are now a lot flattened compared to the OEM. There's no dip here. It actually flattens out and actually has more power right there. Same thing with up here. Now, with being a manual, we're also able to increase your red line to 7,200 RPMs. So, if it, was, if it was a stock car, it, you would be driving with a dip in the power man, and it'll come back up, and then it'll dip again when it gets to the top of the red line. However, with the tune, now it's pulling all the way to red line and past that to 7,200 RPMs. So when you make your shift, it's gonna drop right back down into the best power band possible for you to be making power. So this is where the tune really, really comes to shine. It's basically increasing the amount of um, power band that you can have by increasing the RPM range and giving you obviously more power throughout the whole RPM range, including flat, um, flattening out or even increasing where the dips are. Okay, so you're gonna have a very, very smooth power delivery from low to high RPM without power dips that you're gonna experience on the OEM tune. Okay, so that's where you're gonna see a lot of advantages. Now, with that said, um, again, this car is completely stock. This car has bolt-ons. So if the automatic can put down 285 with bolt-ons on the tune, you can expect higher numbers with bolt-ons and a tune on a manual. So you'll see upwards of some of them putting down, you know, 290 some or even some 300 
I've seen ones that peak over 300. Um, I've seen a lot of them average out around like 295 to 297 at the wheels uh, with full bolt-ons on a manual transmission car. Okay, so I hope that helps you out um, on trying to figure out what the tune does for your car. Hopefully the Dynograph really shows you the differences that you can expect out of the car and it helps you um, understand more of what you're trying to purchase or what you have purchased already. All right, um, next one I'm going to cover will be the BK2 3.8. So make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That way you're notified on the next video that I put up. After that, I'll be mo moving platforms to a different KDM platform that we do um, offer tunes for so we can keep continuing on this series of ECU coverage. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Yeah.